Nicole Scott here from Mobile Geeks. My first time on the stream, guys. I'm really excited to be on. Uh, on day one, I was just on the show floor figuring out all the cool things to show from you, or show to you. And today I'm going to be talking about low cost laptops with Steve Chippy Payne. Morning, Nicole. How are you yeah. feeling this morning? Really good, even after that Intel party last night. That was night. a good party last night, and uh, <laughs> it's giving me a nice radio voice this morning. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> So low-cost laptops at IFA. There's quite a few options to talk about. My personal favorite, uh, let's kick it off with the Asus eBook X205. Which was really interesting because it was like um, a big part of the keynote, right? You know, yes. um, alongside the smartwatch and the, the um, Core M based uh, Ultrabook. So a lot of Core M talk, a so lot of Core M talk. So I guess, you know, the question we have to ask is, is it, is it kind of the new netbook? Or I mean, well, you're the netbook queen. What I did you think of it? I am the netbook queen. I was really excited to see it. I mean, the, it's 11.6 inches, matte display, no touch, which I'm a little down on, because even when I was, you know, really using netbooks, I used to mod them with a touch screen, right? That was a big thing with JKK. Well, you send it to yeah. JKK, and he <laughs> yeah. would mod them for us, yes. <laughs> and, uh, you know, it's... It's exactly the way the netbook should have been. You know, 11.6 inches, full keyboard, right? Powerful matte display, so it's good for on the road of productivity when you're outside, good viewing angles, and it's powerful enough. Yeah, it's interesting that it's now 11.6, you know, back in 2000, what was it, six, seven, eight, nine? They wanted to separate this low cost segment from, you know, everything else which was productive, 11.6 inch and above, which was at that point, Four, four to five hundred uh, euros, right? For even, you know, a, a, a Celeron-based uh, cheap yeah. laptop. So it's interesting now that we've got uh, this position where we've got $200, 200 euro laptops with a productive width screen and keyboard, right? But I have to think back to, what, two, two years ago when everyone was like, oh, the netbook's dead. Okay, fair enough, right? The branding's gone. But then you follow the trend and it just turned into two-in-ones, right? It turned into tablet, tablets with keyboards, which were actually lower performance than what a netbook was, but it's just a cooler form factor, right? So we actually took a step back on productivity in our portable devices in terms of like processing power. Yeah, there's, there's been a gap, hasn't there? There's been yeah. this gap between the last of the netbooks, which I in my mind sticks the the epc 101 which funnily enough came in at 199 dollars right yeah, exactly um which uh, actually i looked up this morning you could still buy that and you can get it for 150 hey. euros in germany <laughs> <laughs> there's one place that still sells them um but then there was this gap as tablets developed so of course there was a bit of an overlap but tablets developed took over netbooks dropped off so we've had this gap of three years where we haven't had a low cost uh, option with a keyboard, right? Yeah, I mean, the, the tablets were like $500 with a really... My first tablet was $799. Yeah, the but Galaxy yeah. Tab, uh, uh, Samsung uh. Galaxy Tab, the first one. And then, uh, like, the thing that killed me about Asus and, like, the Transformer series is Asus killed it in, like, their, their, their last year of making netbooks. That, that, chiclet, that chiclet keyboard was killer. The, 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 the travel on the keys... The full-size shift You're talking keys. about the Android Transformer? No, no, no. Yeah, the Android Transformer. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm talking about the Android Transformer book. Yeah. And then, like, when you saw the keyboard that they use, I'm like, what are these piddly little tiny little key How is anyone going to type on this? And you looked at it, and you're like, wait. So we actually took a step back, right, to, to be, like, cool with our tablets and two-in-ones and this, like, you know, amazing futuristic It's no kind of doubt that uh, marketing took over a little bit yes. at that point. And also, if you think like, um, if you're a manufacturer and you're, you're kicking out a product with maybe a 5% margin and you look at something with a mechanical keyboard, which is generally pretty, not only expensive to, to buy, um, but also a moving part that breaks, right? And you have to get them serviced. So servicing costs go up. So, okay, what are we gonna do? We're gonna make a laptop of 200, we're gonna make a, just a, a, a tablet that we can basically stamp on a production line and just throw out the door. So, of course, the cost was in, in involved as well. Less engineering in a tablet, right? Well, yeah, well, and, and when a tablet breaks, you just have to replace it, basically. <laughs> it's either you're going to replace the display. Oh, yeah, yeah, or yeah. Like there's, there's no support involved There's in no a support tablet, in a tablet, right? right? Like, at least with, like, the netbooks or, like, the, the budget laptops. You know, the average person can maybe take them apart, maybe replace the hard drive. I mean, Asus near the end, actually all the guys near the end were building them, so it was difficult to take them apart. Right, so that if you did break it, then maybe you're just like, okay, let's get another one. It's so cheap, right? But so what are you saying? What should I do with this? <laughs> 
This is the first that? time that I've seen a Nokia with a crack display. I didn't think it was possible. Last night, At all. after the Intel party, Intel. stepping into the taxi, falls out the pocket. And it's a Nokia, so I'm thinking, it's all right. Picked it up and uh, shock. So, yeah. should I, so I can't mend that? Or, or what do you think? I should, is it going to cost me 200 euros to mend the screen? It's going to cost you 200 euros to mend the screen. Right? Uh, Which then you just put into the equation of... Maybe I should get a new device. Yeah, maybe I should buy an Lumia 830, which is uh, going to be what, 399? 330, I think. 330. Is the 330. 330. 330. So for an extra 130 euros, you I get, get a brand, brand new, new phone. Yeah. I mean, this is kind of the, the cost equation that we have to start looking at when you look at budget devices. Right, like. So, just get but a they've, new one. they've also started to do that with with laptops now. The sealed unit laptop, although it's screwed together, you still could take the back off. You could still, in some cases, upgrade the RAM. And actually, we should talk about that with the X205 because it's a, it really is a tablet inside, right? Yeah. In fact, should we talk about that because it's Bay Trail T yeah. inside, which is really interesting because Bay Trail M, the Intel, the new Atom, uh, was was designed for entry level laptops, right? So Asus have taken Bay Trail T, which is di designed for tablets, um, so basically minimal form factor, um, easy to build, easy to manufacture, um, and stuffed it in a laptop. So it's actually a tablet inside. Well, I mean, if you think about it, it's exactly what they're doing with their entire transformer lineup, or the transformer book, right, that's on Windows, and uh, just attach the keyboard. That's it. That's the only difference is that they just didn't make it detachable because That's they can true. make it they can just make it cheaper. <laughs> right? They're already building them, right? So I mean, it's it makes perfect sense actually. Yeah. So um, I had a little play with the uh, X205. You you were at the keynote as well, yes. weren't you? Yes. Yeah, absolutely. And um, it's it's not amazing how much difference that like 1.6 inch extra width, or it's not actually 1.6. It's less than that, but that extra width just gives you the freedom to have a more comfortable keyboard experience, right? The keyboard's quite good, right? The keyboard is actually, that's why I kept on thinking, oh, it's back, the netbook's back, because we lost that amazing small form factor keyboard with Asus yeah. during the time that they kind of thought, oh, let's go into this tablet and then forget that we know how to make a keyboard, right? And so they, they brought it back. They brought back their like killer netbook keyboard with like the big shift keys, no flex in the middle. Like I was really surprised just how solid the keyboard yeah, was. Yeah, the whole the whole thing was pretty solid actually. Um, I'm, I'm looking forward to testing it, of course, uh, yes. to, to really find out whether it's going to perform. But based on what we know about that platform, right, and two gigs of RAM and the 32 gig SSD, right? Yeah. yeah. So so and it's fanless. Yeah, and it's fanless. Yeah. And it's got 12 hours, 12 hours battery life, which I believe actually. Yeah, I'm. It's a 38 watt hour battery. Um, Give, uh, yeah, given what I know about that platform, I'd say mm. browsing seven hours, seven maybe hours? video at a low, offline video at a low screen brightness, maybe 12 hours, yeah. Okay. I mean, I've looked, I've had a Chromebook which, um, which does tw 11 hours video with a 48 watt hour battery, and it's the same platform, same screen sort of technology, so there shouldn't be much difference. So 12 hours, I think, would be low screen brightness video offline. Okay. Now let's, you touched on Chromebooks. Now I have a little bit of an issue now. So I thought that I would love Chromebooks, right? But then Chromebooks just don't fit into my usage scenario, right? Like I'm, pr I'm productive on the road. And on the road doesn't always have an internet connection for me. That's right. Well, cr uh, yeah, on the road, Chromebooks are pretty much a no-no, right? Yeah. So that I think I think that's why I like I follow them, but not not to the de the, the degree that you do. Yeah, well, I've just started following them because um, I've been doing reviews for NotebookCheck.net mm. recently. We had a Chrome, we had the Asus, another Asus C200, which is a 220 euro stroke dollar um, Chromebook. This is the one with a 48 watt hour battery in it, actually. So it's okay. actually the competitor, and it's interesting that it's both Asus. Asus and Asus have two devices that compete against each other in certain ways. Now, we, you know, we should really t uh, talk a little bit about Chromebooks and yeah. the Chromebook issues and the comparisons, the advantages as well. Um, so, you st I mean, we start with on the go, right? On the go, so, on the road. So like even if you've got 3G, if you're actually mm -hmm. moving around, of course, you don't get a permanent connection. So. Yeah, it is always a problem, even if you've got 3G LTE, right? You might be sitting in a coffee shop, you might have good um, reception there, but you'll maybe move to the next one you won't have. So, yeah, issue, mm. issue, issue number one. Issue number one for me. What's your issue number two? Well, is issue number two, I guess, they're too expensive for what you get, 
I mean, if you look at a $200 device that is, it's, 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 to me, it's, it's, it's gimpy, right? It's like, it could be this, but it's not, right? And like, it is good for what it is, but if I'm gonna pay $200 and then I'm looking at something like the ebook, yeah. right, then, then I can bring that anywhere and I can put all of my movies on it, I can put all of my music, I'm not limited to 32 gigabytes. Well, all you are on the, e on the, on the EPC. Yeah, but on it the e has the, but it, yeah, it's got 32 gig storage, right? 32, so 64. Or 64. Well, you can, you can stuff a 64 gig card in a Chromebook as well. That's so true. So I would, I would argue that you can carry enough for movies and music. You know, 64 gigs is a lot of movies and a lot of music, right? It's easy to blow through, though. I mean, like even on my, even on my ultra books, I don't. Maybe it's because I'm a, I'm a content creator. Right. Yeah. So as a, as, a, as a content creator, well, I'm like yeah. 128. Oh, this is yeah. Nothing. Well, if you're putting your um, <laughs> Uh, 30 megabit per second 1080p videos on, on there to edit down to, you know, whatever. No, um, no. Yeah. That's not going to work with a Chromebook, is it? In fact, no? it's not going to work with anything that's got under 500 gigs or 256 worth of gig worth of storage. So, yeah, you're, you're different. Oh, <laughs> you're different. in a good way. <laughs> but I know what you mean. And I, I, I think it's also a little bit an element of boringness with Chromebook, you know? Mm. It's not really that attractive is it the operating system is not attractive no it's it's a browser it's a browser with a few apps right it, it, and to me this skype business oh. <laughs> is the kill this is the number one i think it's for the, the consumers kill point. The uh, kill that point. they need to know about is that it yeah. doesn't run skype you can do skype chat in but it's not to me it's it's, it's not enough right? no it's not and yeah. that that really needs to be fixed and it's really interesting that skype is microsoft and it's not on the chromebook and then you've got the google uh, environment which is google and it's not on windows in the app store you know in the windows app store so they're really holding back and, and i really hope microsoft google please just let go of that problem right microsoft let's get skype uh, port the android app it can be done um, you may be even doing it because i know at the, uh, the Google um, conference, Google announced that they were doing porting of some Android apps into the Chrome environment as a native app. So Skype is one of those. Skype, is, uh, Skype was the big one. Every time I would be somewhere with it, I just I couldn't have, or like any of the, we're, we're, we're on hip chat now for like our, like our mobile geeks chat. I can't get that app. Can you not get it on a, in, a, in the browser? I didn't, well, I guess, no. Oh. Oh, there. maybe maybe I can, but like the app is just so good. Yeah. And then and then it has an app for Android, and it hasn't it doesn't have an app for Windows. But I mean, like uh, just the little chat window, right? Having this like extra and that, uh, everything in a tab, I just kind of I, I can't layer what I'm doing. Yeah, you know? I know what you mean. I know what you yeah. mean. Skype is a big issue, and I hope that gets sorted out. Um, storage we've talked about. I got a little list here that actually, if you go to ChromebookWorld.com, plug Dang. plug my new one hey. of my one of my three sites. It's not the only thing I do. I'm still doing UMC Port. I'm still doing Ultrabook News. But okay. Chrome, I think, it's yeah, since I did this review, mm -hmm. I've got really interested in the Chromebook world. So anyway, ChromebookWorld.com. My list of issues includes printing. Ah. Oh. It's Oof. killer. <laughs> <laughs> I can actually work on a Chromebook and go, oh, great, and, and I'll get to a point and I'll, I'll like, I, I send a lot of packets around, like, so I'll get my DHL thing to print out, PDF. Uh, oh, Christ, where's my printer? can't print. So what have you got to do? You've got to set up another laptop with a printer attached and share it through the cloud, blah, blah, blah. It's an absolute load of rubbish. You know, I, have, I haven't owned a printer in 10 years. It's been 10 years don't since I've print? No, I don't print. Tell printing. you, the amount of paper that gets printing. wasted in our house through the printer no. is unbelievable. No, uh, so in Taiwan, people still do require printing a little bit. Like, they're like, send me a fax. I'm like, a fax? <laughs> Are you joking, a fax? Secure. So um, the solution for me is whenever I do need to print, 7-Eleven uh, has printers. And then Asus's web storage, you can actually upload your stuff to Asus's web storage, right. log in at 7-Eleven, and print it off for one NT. That's interesting. <laughs> wow. So I, I've actually gone into the cloud for any time I need to print. Yeah, okay, <laughs> but there's not even a coffee shop within a kilometer of my house. So I'm not going to have 7-Eleven <laughs> around the corner. But So print, printing is an issue and um cloud this google cloud printing doesn't seem to be taking off okay no. you've got some printers that are capable of just you just stick them on your on your network and you can print to them there aren't many printers around like that and i've still got a printer that's four years old unbelievably um, and we actually bought we went through a number of cheap printers and we bought an expensive one and that's lasted four years 
that's not even got to a network on it, network connection on it, so I can't even wire it into the network. So I still have to connect that to a, a Windows PC or you know, something else. I actually have it connected to my NAS. But, um, that was actually one of the things in the Intel keynote that I thought was interesting, that they're like, we're going wireless. We're pushing it. We're going to do wireless. And I sat there, and I, and, I was, and I was just thinking, well, half the industry is on Qi, and the other half is on what Intel is pushing with the magnetic res resonance, right. right? So, I mean, like, the industry for choosing the standard is still a little fragmented, right? And your printer's four years old. We're not gonna be, you're probably not gonna be adopting another printer for, you know, who, like, like the, the dream of going wireless is fine, but it's gonna take a decade, at least, or more. That's right. Well, I suppose it's good that the Chromebook is there to, to test it and push it and mm -hmm. to find the limits, right? And to find what people will tolerate mm -hmm. or how, how, uh, pe how people can change or are, or are willing to change. So um, it's good that it's there. Now, the, the next thing, of course, we need to talk about is like office apps, right? So the ebook X205 comes with a year of Microsoft Office 365, right? So you get the home license you can use on the device, plus you get an extra license you can take onto another device and use it for a year. So that's home and student. That's worth, I think, $65. Yes. Uh, and you get one terabyte of cloud storage for a year, or is it two years? I think it's one year. But that, that still kills me. When I bought software, I used to buy software. It wasn't licensed to me for a year. I, I'm still trying to wrap my head around this one. The, I don't like the free storage for one year thing. Yeah. Because it's really not free storage. Because what are you going to do after a year? Are you going to move that terabyte somewhere else? No, you're not. Because it's going to take you a week to download it. <laughs> and then another week to upload it somewhere else. So, um, yeah, that is a real lock-in. So beware. If, you, if, you get, if you're using these free storage services and you think you're going to step out of it easily after a year if you've got over 500 gigs on there and you've got to like a, a five gig internet connection a five gigahertz uh, five um, megabits per second uh, connection at home it's going to take you a long time to change providers now and that that's the thing as well with dropbox because I, I i test all these phones i sign into dropbox and i get the free 50 gigs right and so it, like you max out at 100 by the way of, of, of free really? of free dropbox storage right so um, I, had the I had the 100 gigs, and I just lost uh, 50 of them, right, after two years, right? And I, I'm, not, I'm still under my 50, right? But the thing, the thing that made me a little crazy was the emails that they were sending me, the emails that Dropbox was sending that I was losing this 50 gigs, and all the little ways they were, like, digging it's at like me. It's like the end of a phone contract, right? Yeah, and, and like, oh, all, th all the things you're going to lose, all these capabilities you won't be able to have. And, like, and if I didn't have the other 50 gigs, I'd be screwed. Right? There's no such thing as a There's free lunch. There's no such thing as a free lunch. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but I will say that I am getting quite locked into Microsoft uh, OneDrive. Um, it's because you're a phone user. Yeah. Yeah, it's because you're a phone user. Not only that, because I think Windows 8 has it very nicely integrated. And I, I use it a lot. I use a, a lot of devices. Okay, let's, let's say I have four, five, maybe six Windows PCs in the house, right? Mm -hmm. So I know that if I go from upstairs to downstairs, by the time I've gone down the stairs, it's synchronized and, and then my document will be downstairs if I want to print or if I want to, I don't know, do something else downstairs. Maybe I'll, I'll, I'll um, take some pictures in the cellar, right? Do a f f photo shoot and then upload them all into the cloud's work and then edit, use those photos from anywhere as I do a blog post about a certain products. So, so are, are you a Windows, uh, um, sorry, a Microsoft 360 user? No, no, I'm actually a Microsoft Office Home Student user from the old li free licenses, oh, okay. which is a free for forever, license forever license on those tablets. Yeah, yeah. my oh, daughter okay. uses it as well. She uses a Lenovo Mix uh, to, uh, Mix 210, yeah. the 10-inch one. We have a HDMI connection to a screen. She uses PowerPoint on that for her school projects, and that really works well for her. And I've t asked her a couple of times. She said, "Okay, is that fast enough?" Fine, she's happy. So that was really worth it, that, that uh, license. And that won't time out after a year, so that's cool. So I'm, I'm, I'm actually a, um, a Libra user. I'm open, open off, I'm free. I'm 100% on the, on the free, because I, I, well, I, I, I would just be. can't. I would be I if I didn't I can't wrap my free. head around the fact paying for software yeah. every year, <laughs> every year. It's just, it well, just yeah, it's, it, but then again, what did Office used to cost for professional users? You know, the whole package was two, three, four, five, depending on what you, what you wanted. It was a lot of money. Um, it kind of, yeah, and now it's only 99 for a year's license for a family, right? So it's oh, more know. accessible, I think, now. You think so? Yeah. No, okay. But maybe, maybe like I'm, you, I don't yeah. buy it. I don't buy it. I've got the free one, but I wouldn't buy yeah. it. I use uh, 
I use Google Docs a lot. I use, um, yeah, I have LibreOffice on one or two devices as well. Yeah, it was, it was actually funny. We, I started working with some other people, and uh, they were like, well, what do you do for your Word? And I was like, LibreOffice. And all, like, then there was, a, there was a pause, and they're like, I'm willing to try that again. <laughs> 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 like, it's compatible with, with everything, right? So it's, it's not an issue for, you know, like, oh, it won't work. But it, it, was, it was just this moment of like, huh, so it's actually a feasible alternative, and it's gotten good enough. Yeah. It's really gotten good enough. Yeah, it is. It is. Those, those, there's a number of them that's, uh, that are worth, worth having. So um, what was the other thing I want to talk about? It was USB devices. So mm -hmm. on a Chromebook, attaching USB devices. And I was quite surprised my Wi-Fi, USB Wi-Fi adapter worked. I connected a USB docking station with, with screen, and the audio worked, the gigabit Ethernet worked, and of course the hub worked. Um, of course the screen didn't work, uh, the USB screen. So it's quite a lot, but still, you know, can't plug in, you know, every device and know that it's going to work. It's this like, oh, it does 90% thing being 10% of, a problem 10% of the time, right? Mm. So still think there's a problem there with USB support. So let's go over, we're talking about low-cost laptops, right? right? Back, to, back to the point. Back to low-cost laptops. Um, Chromebooks would come in under which user for, for low-cost, like, like you're looking, so for a low, you're looking for a low-cost device. Who are you that you're buying a Chromebook? Who are you? <laughs> well, uh, there's a number of categories of people. Number one, Google fans, right? Yeah. And they are mostly based in, in the US mm -hmm. for obvious reasons and some not of so obvious reasons. For example, we're in Berlin, we're in Germany, where if you're running a company, you have to ask your customers whether you can store data in a cloud. And when you tell your customers you're storing them in a, in a cloud outside the country, not under German jurisdiction, that becomes a problem. So that's why actually Chromebooks are a bit of a problem in, in Germany right now for businesses because they don't want their data stored outside the country, especially since yeah. uh, Snowden. So um, that's the second uh, little bit of an issue. So that also impacts the education how, market. How is this even an issue? <laughs> it's a major that's, issue. I know. You, like, if you have a big client, so crazy. If you, and, and I've experienced this my, in my wife's company. I'm, I'm, I advise my wife's company on security. She has asked me if she can use certain services. Yammer. Um, what's the one you use again? This hip chat, hip, hip, chat. hip chat. We looked at that, and the problem with that is that data is going to go. Customers' data may be stored outside the country. That's a really a big issue. They won't do it. They just won't take the risk. So you're not that user. So that's not so a Chromebook that's user. That's not a Chromebook user. So what is a, a Chromebook business. user? In the yeah. US, okay, a Chromebook user is, number one, the education market. Yeah. It's back to school time right now. And we saw um, two weeks ago, I saw about 15 press releases. I just searched for education Chromebook okay. uh, within a week. 15 press releases from schools and uh, um, uh, suppliers saying, we're taking Chromebooks. Thousands and thousands and tens of thousands of right. Chromebooks have gone into schools this 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 year, um, which is a big. I don't know if it's a big swap or change, but it's a big change from last year where it was mainly just iPads that was a big news. You know, See, going into the education. Back market. to the keyboard. Need to be productive, right? Uh -huh. Yeah. This is this is my big thing from that. My, my my big tip off from Efa is that you just you need a keyboard if you want to get things done, right? And I think the Chromebook is, is, a, is a step in that direction as well, which is why we're seeing education, right? Move away, yep. move away from iPads that have no keyboard yeah. to something with a keyboard. Not and just the keyboard, though. So the, for the education market, it's um, power wash is the big thing, right? So at the end of the day, you can reset every single device in a very short time. Try power washing a Windows 8 device, mm. even the tablets. If you do the full reset with data, data uh, washing rather than just sort of setting the indexes back to zero. That takes 40 minutes on a 32 gig tablet. You can't do that at the end of a day at school, right? But with the Chromebook, you can do a power wash on all of them, just like that, remotely, because they can be managed yeah. remote, okay. via remote co console. Well, that's a massive thing. They can't install their software in there. So what, the kids are going to get annoyed, but is that going to worry the teachers? Yeah. Is that going to worry the IT staff? that are not going to have a problem with security there. So. Um, yeah, then you've got the free collaboration tools with Google and there's a whole load mm. of advantages for, for, the, for the school market. And I think we're talking about 70% of Chromebooks are going into the education market right now. So although they're a quite big, 
big seller on Amazon. Mm -hmm. I think you look at the top 10, you'll see about four Chromebooks, They are right? in the top 10, and that, that's why I've been taking notice of them a, a little bit more, because they're going mainstream Let me look at that on, right on Amazon right now. And Keyboard. for, yeah, <laughs> but for, um, for me, they've just never had that appeal, just because I, I, I do travel, and this whole, like, home to coffee shop business, like maybe if you're only using your device at home, which is what we found with the netbook at, at the end of like really looking at people's usage scenarios, the kind of at home mobility is still key. And I mean, that's why 15.6 inch devices are still really huge because people want to carry them around their house, yeah. right? Because yeah. at home portability is actually like the most important form factor when looking at any device. So like, let's get the so uh, best-selling laptops. Best-selling laptops. Wait, 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 what do we have to come up. on Amazon? Dun, dun, dun. Uh, back to school, all in. So Windows we've tablets. got. Uh, oh, ah, <laughs> oh. A Dell Inspiron. I don't think that's got. That's a Dell Inspiron. A, fifteen so inch. So a fifteen inch for two hundred and fifty dollars. Must have been on special offer. That's quite a deal. So Asus C two seventy Chromebook is number Chromebook. two. Oh, interesting. Actually, that. This has changed quite a lot since I last looked at it. Ah. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight out of the top ten are Windows. That's really interesting. It's Transformer Book. It's the cheap uh, ES1, which is the 219 euro Acer equivalent to the Asus right. X205. Right. That's really interesting. It's changed quite a lot. The top. Well, I guess it would be the back to school, right? It would be the back to school. So? I yeah. think. Maybe. Well, this is this is the back to school sales time, and all of those are productivity devices, right? Could be like, pe like people getting work done. I think, which is why we've probably seen the Chromebook drop off a little bit, because it's true. At other times of the year, the Chromebook takes up half of the Amazon top list, right? You're right. You're right. Yeah. So. Um, so this is the trend. IFA 2014. Keyboards <laughs> are coming back. People actually want to get things done. Yeah. Go figure. Maybe face the <laughs> Facebook only concept is, uh, is is kind of moving away from your so devices. So I, I have a question. Mm -hmm. um, so we're kind of talking about two hundred, three hundred dollars, right? Yeah. What is this big now? This big fight going? No one really knows. We talk about the advantages and disadvantages, but no one really knows what's actually going to happen in that space. Are no. Chromebooks, Chromebooks going to push forward? Are Windows, low top Windows laptops going to be um, the the big thing? What about like two hundred dollar tablets? There's some really cool. Tablets oh, th around this, for $200, this right? space is actually really growing up, right? It, and it's um, Intel had a had a big push with the Lenovo S8, which is a gorgeous device, really nice screen, and uh, I love that Lenovo is bringing back this floating display, right? So it kind of sits on top. It just it's, it's a nice device. It's really. a nice device, and like uh, this, I've been waiting for the floating display to go more mainstream, which we've seen with Lenovo finally, because we only ha really had it on the Xiaomi uh, Mi 3 before, which is a Chinese phone. Right, I it's Lenovo the Chinese company, but it's it's kind of finally entering into the main market, and it's it's just so sexy looking. I've just been given a three minute signal. I think is that oh, right? Okay. We've got three minutes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So we need to. Uh, we didn't even get through half of our oh. checklist of things. We were worried about things to talk about. This is so <laughs> typical. You know, it's like the podcast has gone forever and ever and ever. <laughs> so I think, yeah. What I was going to say is, do you think tablets are really um, impact that Chromebook and lap, uh, Windows laptop space in two to three hundred category? Are there some consumers in there that would actually think, oh, well, maybe I'll have a, a tablet No, I instead. think I think that the, the the way they're impacting this market is they're going to extend the refresh period time, right? That like maybe you won't be picking up a device in the next, you know, like this year you'll pick it up next year because you'll right. just refresh your or tablet. Or you can have both. I mean, or you can have on. both. Two they're years ago, a, la a laptop cost four hundred dollars. Now you can buy the laptop and the tablet for four hundred dollars. So why not buy both? Why not buy both? Yeah, no, it, well. And a Chromebook. And a Chromebook. Just pick them all up. <laughs> all right. So, um, yeah, that's it, really. Um, well, that's all we I'm have I'm going to go and uh, take another look at the Toshiba one, because Toshiba have a low cost one as well. Yeah, so. absolutely. And I'm going to be checking out, well, actually, not in the low cost. I want to check out the, uh, the Acer V11. Yeah. Because I'm, 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 I'm really excited about Iris Graphics, Intel's Iris Graphics for video editing and productivity. So You're a real I Irish fangirl, I am fan an girl, Irish right? fangirl. And uh, yeah, so there's a bunch of new devices on that. So that's where I'm going to be heading to the show floor. And then you're actually going to be able to find me with Rob Vegas from the Rob Vegas Show. Uh, we're going to be hitting up the Samsung booth for a booth tour there, Sony booth tour, Mazda as well. So this is going to be the last time you're going to see me chained to a chair. Next time you're going to see me assaulting booth people, trying to make them cry. I'm or following you. Give me stuff. <laughs> Either or. All right. So thanks so much and tune back in.